Panaplan's solution for sales performance management, or SPM, centers around the idea that we can use a connected planning platform to help organizations chart the path to revenue and commercial success. So what is connected planning? Well, Anaplan's cloud-based platform connects the data, so pulling data in from different sources, mainly internal but also external as well, bringing them all into one place. Connected planning connects the people and connects the processes. So we'll have different people in the organization doing different things, but if we can all work from the same data and all collaborate, work together to achieve our uh, endpoint of our processes, then we are truly doing connected planning within the organization. As far as visualizing the concept of connected planning, we find the honeycomb concept that we see here really useful. Of course, the individual parts of the organization operate their own distinct processes, but these processes are naturally interdependent and connected to other areas of the business. And using a cloud planning tool like Anaplan provides for each, processes, for each process to happen, but also provides for that connection between different parts of the, of the organization and between uh, within an individual function itself. So if you look at the top right hand side in blue of the honeycomb that we see on the screen, we've got incentive rewards, quota modeling, sales forecasting, territory and even marketing performance all linking together within that uh, sales part of the business, but also providing those touch points with the wider business communi community. So what does that look like then when we think about a, a process flow uh, of Anaplan and data coming into plan, Anaplan uh, models providing the relevant output that we need to make those better decisions in the business. If we look um, on the left hand side here with data sources, we're pulling data in from wherever it resides in the organization. The data we need for planning that might come from other cloud sources, it might come from relational data, it might come from CSV or Excel. We've got the ability to transform that data. And then we propose best practice of creating a data hub within your Anaplan environment. What that means then is you've got one set of verified data that's coming into Anaplan. And then we've got those connected planning models that we see branching off from that uh, data. So whether you're doing sales forecasting uh, or incentive compensation, territory and quota not shown here as models, but equally applicable, then everybody's using the same set of data. There's no discussion over who's got the right set, who's got the most up-to-date set of data. And equally, if you've got here, for example, a team doing sales forecasting in Anaplan, there's a good chance that there's going to be an input required from demand planning. There's going to be data needs to flow into FP&A. So that's really truly what connected planning means. To achieve the commercial go goals, organizations must set corporate goals, translate these corporate goals into market plans, to go to market plans, create performance levers that drive motivation to reach the desired outcomes and have processes in place that promote sales excellence. Bringing these processes into this single cloud-based platform makes a huge difference. A connected planning approach that enables the three elements of connection that we talked about above, connecting the data, connecting the people, connecting the processes. If we look at the corporate goals and go-to-market strategy first, this is the sales planning process using Anaplan to create balanced territories and quotas, define market segments, eliminate coverage gaps, de develop capacity plans. We can do this with Anaplan because we have current, regularly updated data. We have access to history, e.g. win rates, deal velocity, discounting, and so forth. We can interface to internal data source, and we can bring in external data as well. And we have the capability to change on the fly as these internal and ex external factors change. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the territory and quota planning app that we have open uh, on the landing page in front of us now. We're logging in as somebody who's got absolute access to everything. However, in reality, we're bringing together a group of people. We're connecting those people who might be involved in different elements of this uh, overall uh, app to generate those quotas, align them, approve them, set up the territories and, and so forth. Um, we'll see let's start off with sales history so we're bringing in data into our uh, into our application that's our external our internal data but also potentially our external data very importantly here we're starting to think about not only bringing in our historic prior year sales against our accounts and looking at total addressable market for our um, existing accounts and maybe uh, target accounts but we're also starting to score those accounts in, in a couple of ways maybe a more simple firmographic approach to scoring uh, our accounts, but also thinking, taking a more 
uh, scientific approach using Alipan's predictive insights to score accounts as well. So if we think about that, we're using predictive insights to identify uh, the ideal customer profile to score and prioritize and to identify new prospects to target. So that's a good example there of bringing internal and external data together in Alaplan for that planning process. We're now thinking about goal setting in this application. So we're taking our historic data, we're taking our predictive spends, our total uh, addressable market, and then ultimately generating a target, which we're then going to push down to region, further then down to sub-region, then ultimately down to an account level with approval levels as required at each stage of that process. So if we just jump in and look at the regional goal setting, we're taking a target for the Americas and then spreading it out lower down to US East, US South. If we now go down to sub-region, we can see how now we're taking that same US target for US East target and pushing that out between these three sub-regions. Ultimately, it goes right down, our target goes right down here for the Northeast for this particular product FY21 for the forecast, we're now down to an, at an account level. So we've set our targets. We need to now be sure that we've got the resources in place to achieve those targets. If I look at my geo capacity analysis screen here, I'm looking at US East for my key accounts and the forecast. I can see I've got two heads approved, which uh, I can add those two into uh, the relevant position that's going to achieve the most benefit for us. We can see down here in my coverage capacity and gaps, I've got a coverage gap down here in the northeast and we're working out then what's the potential impact of adding a new uh, head to um, this particular area. So we might then want to consider, let's put one of our uh, heads in that area because that's going to help us to start uh, filling that uh, coverage gap that we're seeing here. I also have the capability in the app to um, define those territories and make sure I've got the right people assigned to those territories. That might be key account assignment, it might be overlay assignment, it might be enterprise level. It's also worth remembering here, we're just looking at, at an example, how you decide to uh, implement the exact requirements of your business is, is entirely um, down to your, your processes. If we look at the key account assignment here, we can see we're bringing in alerting into the system here that we've got some key accounts which are uh, under assigned. We, go, we can go to individual uh, reps in the northeast here we can look at Tom we can see all the accounts that have been to, been assigned we can even see here for example one of those assignment is ending on the 30th of April and that's actually being handed over to, to Monica from the 1st of for 1st of May onwards so great flexibility on how you uh, assign those uh, key accounts in the, in this case finally in here we want to have some element of workflow where, where we can finalize and, and sign off so here we see our manager finalize quota and sign off. We're looking at an, at an individual rep level here. We're just looking at Northeast and we can see here, is, has it been reviewed? Does it need review? Are there any holds or overrides you want to put in place against those individual targets, against those individual reps? The performance levers that we can use to reach our desired revenue targets are where Anaplan can give you a comprehensive incentive compensation modeling and reporting capability create plans, assign individuals to plans, track performance, manage disputes, as well as communicate this performance to both employees and managers. So there is no doubt of where performances come from or where the gaps might be. As with the sales planning process, we're going to use data from different data sources and we need the ability to adjust as required, as well as carry out what if modeling to test the impact of making changes or the likely overall cost of a commission plan, for example. So let's take a closer look at the uh, incentive compensation management app that we're seeing now on the screen. If we just scroll down, we just scroll down slightly, we can see here we're dealing with the payees and also the managers. So we're giving visibility to payees and managers of where they are uh, in terms of year to date achievement, also giving them access to history as well. Before that even happens, we of course need to create those plans. We need to create plans, uh, assign individuals to those plans and also, we've got the capability to start thinking about, well, what if certain achievements are met? What's that going to cost the business? Uh, and also giving that to the individuals to do the what if modeling on their own um, accounts to understand what they might be able to achieve um, as, the, as the year progresses. We're covering off the capability to have a disputes workspace, 
we are allowing overrides and adjustments to be made and also giving the payees and the managers full visibility um, of, of that information. Finally, then we're bringing in the workflow process uh, once, once again in here to carry out payment approvals and then ultimately exporting uh, a payroll uh, a file from Anaplan to, to payroll. Now, of course, again, this is an example. Uh, the, the nuances of your process are absolutely capable of being modeled within Anaplan to uh, really fit the, your requirements. From a payee perspective, then, if we just jump into that screen, we're providing then the payee's full visibility of where they are, what they've achieved, what's um, where they are in the current position in the, in the current quarter. Here, we're looking back at quarter one for one of our reps. Security will ensure that uh, they only see their own details. They've got some headline figures here. They've got a breakdown of where the credit has come from. And they can also jump into the real detail behind the attainment uh, in this case for Q1, looking at the individual monthly performance, looking at the flow that takes them from uh, the credits right down to the final payouts um, as well. We're managing and creating the plans in our application here too. Let's just have a look at that. We can see here we've got a list of existing plans and the time periods over which they run. And we can see here these are all approved in terms of workflow. Let's focus on the strategic plan and jump forward. Now looking just for that strategic plan, we can see the inputs of that strategic plan. It's made up of these two elements down here. Uh, I might want to add further measures to the plan or review the existing measures we've got in our measures library. Um, going forward to the next screen, I want to actually think about the rate tables and maybe edit and manipulate the rate tables I've got attached to this quarterly revenue commission, which is part of the strategic uh, element and also start to think about some what if calculations down so down here i'm looking at a concept of what would happen if we had seven million uh, bookings here um, what will the payout be based on my different tiers uh, and i can even flex those tiers as i need to here i have got data entry capabilities so i can start thinking about changing changing those tiers uh, and seeing what the impact that will have on the commission paid we also need the ability to manage our credit rules and assignments. So jumping in there, we see now that we're looking we're looking at individual individual reps. So I'm focused on Tom here, and I can see all all of his accounts. He's a strategic AE. We can see our hire date there. We can see the credit is rolling up to his manager as well. He's got ten a, he's got ten accounts. If uh, alternatively, if we jump down and look at one of our overlays, we can see that. That Gabby is product focused instead in the northeast against these uh, three products. We, of course, need to be able to bring our territory changes in from our territory and quota model that we looked at previously. So we've got that connected nature that we can uh, take output from one model in our plan and bring it into uh, another. Finally, then here in our incentive and comp um, application, let's think about payment approvals over on the right hand side. What we're doing at this point in time is looking at uh, total company or individual uh, elements in the hierarchy. We're looking at a point in time, and a plan has calculated the uh, the payouts, and we're then employing a essentially a three-level approval process, auto-approve tier group where we might want to individually uh, go in and approve or, or hold, and then there's a must review layer as well. We're setting thresholds to decide how uh, the different roles what the lower and upper bounds will be for each of those stages of approval so ultimately that then gives us the ability to easily focus on for example let's focus on my must review um, i can see here there's um, a 774 percent uh, above the target incentive uh, that is our a hold I've put a hold on there I'm commenting against that hold so that can be visible then by anyone else who's using the model who has relevant access to the model finally reaching our revenue goals is underpinned by a general desire for sales excellence through standardized forecasting methods improved accuracy better collaboration and the ability for the business to develop contingency plans and importantly be able to implement across the organization therefore to be able to regularly check back to see how we are doing versus the plan and to readjust as required in our sales forecasting app then we are trying to improve visibility 
by bringing time-based forecasting at an opportunity and stage level with an ability to allow adjustments at different stages of the process by different levels in the organization. And we're bringing that all into one platform. In this app then, we've not only got a view of the history of what has happened at a good level of detail, but of course, it's a forecast. We're looking forward. We've got the data here. We've got people involved in the process to give us a better view, a, be a better prediction, a better view of the future, enabling us to react more quickly to changes, uh, limiting the number of surprises, reducing the number of surprises, allowing us to focus on what's important. We can see who's closing. We can see what's closing. We can see best performance among different uh, account executives. Let's just take a look at some of the parts of the process here. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into our RVP review, RVP summary and commit. We can see the RVP is focused on the on, in the northeast. We're looking at Q3, FY21, and in terms of a version, we're looking at the current week. But you can see we've got all the history going back to see how we were looking at previous points in the year. If we come down here, we can see we've got we're still in progress. Workflow is is being taken care of by Anaplan. We can simply submit when we're ready at this point. We've got a view um, down here of our opportunities of our salespeople in the northeast. If we focus on Ron, for example, down here, we've got some summary level information um, around how Ron's doing. We've got some adjustments going through there and we can see that detail being mapped out on the lower portion of the screen against the individual accounts. So for example, this account for this product on a contract term of three years, we put an adjustment in there overriding what's come out of, um, of, of Salesforce. We've got Salesforce close showing this date here, but for the purposes of the forecast, we're going to make an adjustment to that close date. In addition, we look at the next opt down. We can see here we're adjusting the forecast from a commit to upside. Overall, then that gives us a, a, a revised forecast of commit upside and total, which we can then submit up to the next level to our AVP for review. At, uh, at the next level up. In summary then, we've looked at three areas that Anaplan can help in the sales uh, performance management process within the organization. Firstly, sales planning, help, helping organizations focus resources in the right way and in the right places. Secondly, incentives and rewards, using the levers to drive the behavior that matches the market strategy that the company wants. Lastly, sales forecasting, helping to predict better and more consistently uh, and also react quickly to uh, and effectively to changes that are happening in the marketplace.